and then you're all set, Alexa. All right, thank you. Uh, um, well, thanks everyone for being here today. Uh, this, uh, this presentation is not typical. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about biology, theory, uh, mathematics, uh, but mostly history and some philosophy. Um, uh, this presentation is a result of my uh, idea of um, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the publication of a very important paper in the field of fish population dynamics. And, uh, and then just tell you a little bit more about the story of a very talented scientist who fought for his uh, uh, views his whole life and was uh, truly appreciated only after his death, which I guess uh, happens um, once in a while. So in 1918, slightly more than 100 years ago, young Russian engineer Fyodor uh, Baranov, who in Russian you pronounce, you use the uh, uh, the sound uh, instead of a, not Baranov, but Baranov, uh, published the paper on the question of the biological basis of fisheries, which is considered by uh, many a cornerstone in the modern fishery science. Because in, for the first time in that paper, Brana formalized fish population dynamics by uh, describing changes in population abundance with differential equations. Uh, he introduced the concept of instantaneous uh, fishing natural mortalities, developed this famous catch equation, uh, which is really in the heart of uh, most of the age structure assessment models. He showed the effect of the fishing and population size and age structure based on theoretical grounds and developed the formal concept of optimal exploitation. Unfortunately, his paper did not receive much of attention from biologists in Russia by the time of the publication and was generally unknown to scientists in other countries at least until uh, late 1930s. However, his other publication on the question of the uh, dynamics of the fishing industry received substantial criticism from many prominent biologists in the Soviet Union and sparked a furious debate between Baranov and his opponents that lasted for several decades until his formal theory and the catch equation uh, um, uh, uh, um, Sorry, and, and like his um, formal theory and the, in the catch equation, that the, the story of those debates is uh, was largely unknown to uh, to most in um, <clears throat> around the world. A little bit of uh, history and biography uh, uh, to bring the human component. Uh, Varana was born in the large city of Nizhny Novgorod uh, um, on the Volga River. Uh, the uh, upreaches of the Volga River. That, that was a large city with the famous uh, industrial fair for the whole Russia. Um, he received the uh, uh, primary education and gymnasium, a typical uh, school for middle class uh, at that time, which traditionally focused on humanitarian education languages, Greek, Latin, German, French, and Church Slavonic. That's all that you had to learn, logic, philosophy. But Baranov, as he recalls, was particularly interested in the natural sciences. And he was saying that he was uh, reading a lot of books, got really interested in insect collections and later in fishing. He said that he was actually more interested in designing and making fishing gear than fishing itself. He said, I was making fishing poles, reels, jigs. I bent hooks, braided lines, learned how to knit nets. In 1904, uh, he entered the shipbuilding department of St. Petersburg Polytechnical Institute. That's the uh, the building on the uh, lower right corner, right here, with the uh, with the big lawn garden in front of it. And uh, graduated in 1909. Um, uh, so he had a career in a uh, well-defined career in shipbuilding, but he uh, decided to focus on studying fisheries. In 1915, he was hired as a professor of the newly created Department of Fisheries Technology, which later became the Moscow Institute of Fisheries. And he served as the head of this department for the next 40 years. Um, from the first 
steps of his career, he was really interested in understanding interaction between fish stocks and the fishery. And uh, uh, he fo focused on um, uh, the principal question or questions, uh, does the fishery have an effect on the targeted fish populations and can we predict it? Um, in 1914, uh, he published a small article on the question of overfishing, in which he expressed for the first time his thought on the, uh, on the effect of fishing on fish populations, where he wrote, one of the most discussed topics in the diminishing of fish stocks and subsequent reduction in catch and fish size. However, the main question is being neglected. What is the normal state of fisheries? And is it possible to keep the populations in pristine condition in the presence of fishing? So um, using forest uh, exploitation as an example, he argued that uh, at various levels of harvest, an equilibrium can be reached as long as there are enough seeds and suggested that fishing will have similar effects on fish stocks. To make his point, uh, he uh, noted, uh, that claims of negative effects of fishing had been made at the time, at least as early as 500 years ago, as is demonstrated by the petition to the English parliament in 1376 that requested the prohibition of new fishing gear similar to the oyster dread that takes too many small fish. And similar claims, he says, about the negative effect of trolling emerged regularly. However, fish stocks, as Baranov persisted, although with different characteristics relative to earlier times. So he appeared to be convinced as early as 1914 that increase in fishing pressure changes population parameters. However, increased fishing does not necessarily destroy the stock itself, rather it brings the population and the fishery to a new equilibrium. So he kept working on this idea and developed a formal mathematical theory that was presented a few years later. Um, so in 1918, he published his fundamental paper on the question of overfishing. Uh, oh, uh, where he presented the results of the theoretical analysis of the interaction between the fishery and fish stocks. Um, so he starts the, uh, presenting the idea uh, in a simple way. He says, let us imagine an ideal case with an isolated body of water where fishing is conducted at a constant rate for a long period of time, and there are no sharp fluctuations of uh, environmental factors. As the fish grow, their numbers will diminish due to various sources of mortality. If we plot the graph with fish length over x and, and the number of fish on the y-axis, we'll get a mortality curve that we have here on the left that shows a gradual, gradual decline of the cohort abundance over time as they grow. Now let us assume that spawning occurs continuously and each spawn produces the same amount of juveniles. In this case, at any moment of the, of the time, the population will consist of cohorts. And if we plot the number of fish at each size, we will get the population curve, which will be identical to the mortality curve of a single cohort. So that's an important element there. Now in the formulas, essentially form formalizing this, we say, well, if at a single moment of time, there is a probability of fish to die, and we uh, designate it as, for example, as the Z, uh, and if their number of fish present is N, then the number of fish dying at single moment of time is Z times N, and that's uh, a change in a small period of time uh, in, in the numbers of, in the, at the very small element of time, which is dn over dt, or so this, this is the differential. And if we uh, integrate that, that formula, we arrive with the uh, exponential relationship between the, uh, the number of fish at, a, uh, uh, at time t relative to the uh, initial abundance.
And then if the mortality is uh, uh, comprised of the two components, uh, natural mortality and fishing mortality, then we can bring the formula of fishing mortality in, uh, and uh, investigate the effect of both fishing mortality and uh, 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 natural mortality. Um, he compared the agent structure of the fish under the assumption of equilibrium conditions. Um, uh, where the uh, the uh, where the agent size structure of the fish that died because of fishing and natural mortality, and uh, concluded that if the fishery is in a state of equilibrium, the number of fish of the exploitable size that die due to fishing and natural causes is equal to the number of fish that recruit the exploitable population as a, as a result of growth, regardless of what level of mortality and the shape of the population occurs. He also showed there that um, the population go, can go through the tra transition or uh, change from uh, one steady state equilibrium to another if we change the fishing mortality. Uh, and we can demonstrate that graphically by applying a new level of uh, F and, and see how the, the population curve will change through time. So he concludes, what often is interpreted as overfishing because of the change in the size structure is simply a transition from one state of the fishery to another. Uh, and of course, the famous catch equation. So if the um, annual losses, are, we define them here as five, phi are equal to the one minus exponent of minus F and M. Um, then uh, the fraction of losses due to fishing would be just the ratio of uh, fishing mortality over the total mortality. And the product of this two would uh, be um, the amount of uh, catch um, as a fraction. And if you multiply it by the number of fish that were present at the start of the year, then you get the actual catch and the um, absolute numbers. He proceeded further by investigating the, uh, oh, uh, he actually developed um, uh, a relationship be between the, um, the population weight and the catch in the weight as a function of the fishing mortality. Um, and as a part of this analysis, he investigated the, um, the change in the yield and weight uh, under various constant fishing mortality rates, essentially generating the yield per, per recruit model, which uh, was you know, represented much later by Beverton and Halt. Um, and he also uh, showed and uh, noted and, 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 and uh, talked about the, the role of uh, level of M on the shape, in, in the shape of that curve, uh, noting that under, if, if the natural mortality is small, then there is a very well expressed maximum, as you could see here with the upper line. But as the, if the natural mortality is higher, then uh, in many cases, uh, you will not have a ex uh, clearly expressed maximum and the maximum yield uh, could be achieved at the uh, uh, various levels of fishing mortality. Uh, he applied this uh, analysis to uh, the data on North Sea Place at the time um, by looking at the information on the uh, average size of place in Kattegat. Uh, that's the uh, sort of area in the North Sea, uh, between actually North Sea and the Baltic Sea uh, in um, Denmark. And uh, by comparing two periods of time in, in 1880s and then 1900s, where in the first place the fishing pressure was low and was done near shore. In the second, uh, the Danish saints were invented and the fishing spread all over Kattegat area. And uh, um, so by comparing this um, uh, two, uh, two periods and using the information on the average fish size, applying to uh, his, uh, uh, his formulas, uh, it, for the first time estimated the na annual natural mortality and uh, the, the total fishing mortality for, for the place in, in that area. 
Uh, so, um, Baranov's uh, 1918 paper was truly revolutionary uh, and could have had a large influence if it reached scientific community at the time. But unfortunately, uh, the problem was with the paper accessibility, uh, which was published in the unknown Russian journal and was exacerbated by uh, a number of political reasons. Uh, uh, there was uh, the World War I and then the revolution and then the civil war exactly around that time, which followed by decades of country isolation for political reasons. And because of that, Baranov's paper received no response from fisheries scientists in Russia at that time or from abroad in the, in the longer time period. Nonetheless, he uh, kept uh, thinking about two important questions. What is the normal state of exploited fish population? And is it possible and rational to keep the population in pristine condition while continuing fishing. He addressed this question in this uh, 1925 paper on the uh, question of the dynamics of the fisheries, where he approached the, uh, these questions from a different angle. He explored the relationship between the productivity of the water, the term ecosystem was not in use at the time, and uh, the fish stock biomass and catch based on the concept of the constant total biomass in the system in the same way as we do uh, say for example in the ecosystem these days so uh, uh, again uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the, the principal <clears throat> concept was very simple uh, he started with saying well suppose we have a water basin whether with a pristine natural condition where the productivity of this of this water body is A, um, <clears throat> some tropic uh, units of production, and the total weight of fish is B. Um, suppose A and B reflect the equilibrium condition, then we can uh, say that um, the biomass production is equal to the production of food needed to maintain the base stock of fish B1. Uh, plus the food produced to maintain the part of the fish stock that is taken uh, each year as a catch, C1 in this case. So we have this linear relationship where K is the amount of food needed to maintain one unit of fish biomass. So this uh, uh, could be uh, then um, rewritten and uh, we could uh, define the relationship between the uh, pristine biomass, uh, uh, standing stock biomass and catch. Uh, and then uh, when the population was observed, if the population was observed uh, in two equilibrium states with different levels of exploitation, then we can have uh, um, a system of two equations, right, which will then can be solved for A and B. Um, and then we'll, we'll get an estimate of the, uh, the unfished biomass. Um, and uh, this uh, was attempted by Bar Baranov in this paper where he presented two examples of application of this approach by looking at the uh, history of the place fishery in the North Sea and, and as well uh, the Caspian approach in the northern part of the Caspian Sea. Um, obviously, uh, the what was called later the great fishing experiment of World War I, uh, I believe uh, that the, each of you have, uh, have you, know, you, you know very well of, of that expression. Um, where the, <clears throat> the lack of fishing uh, over five years or so resulted in significant recovery of fish stocks in both in the North Sea primarily, as well as so many other areas. So that information on pre-war and post-war lending and exploitation rates uh, allowed Baranov in, uh, in his analysis to estimate pristine biomass and, and coefficient A from the formula. So um, he then proceeded uh, after obtaining these parameters uh, by plotting the relationship between yield and instantaneous fishing mortality rate to show that yield increases with the increase in fishing mortality 
and reaches asymptotic values in equilibrium condition. And um, he proceeds with the conclusions where he says our conclusions are very different from the current dominant concept where a natural stock of fish is untouchable capital and the fisher can only take a small percent of, the, of this capital in the form of growth production. He says, our theory says that pristine stock and the fisher are incompatible and the exploitable stock is variable in size and dependent on fishing intensity. The more the fishery takes, the smaller is the standing stock. The less the fishery takes, the larger is the standing stock, getting closer to the pristine status as the fishing mortality gets close to zero. That is the nature of things. <clears throat> so he says, World War I presented an opportunity for the greatest experiment that is equivalent to the passing of Venus across the sun, which happens once in the centuries. And while fisheries will be going through the recovery period, stocks will be transitioning to a new equilibrium state. We would be grabbing this opportunity to monitor this transition, should be grabbing this opportunity to monitor these transitions by collecting fishery statistics in order to gain precious information. Otherwise, our fishing theory will remain just a theoretical exercise while practical measures will be taken in the darkness. This, this was all happening, this was all in writing at the time when for two decades, the ISIS scientists, the International Council for the Exploration of the Sea, which was formed in 1903, were debating about the uh, what is governing the, uh, the population dynamics of fish stocks uh, with, with the focus on primarily in the North Sea and for particularly on place. Um, uh, and uh, if they were familiar with both um, papers in 1918 and 1925, they could have had a profound uh, uh, effect, but obviously that uh, uh, those papers were not known to them at the time. And therefore uh, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the discussion just remained uh, within the uh, range of the Russian biologists or fishery scientists at, at, the, at, at the time. So unlike his 1918 paper, which went unnoticed, this publication received substantial criticism from many prominent biologists in this, that, uh, that time Soviet Union. And they sparked a furious debate between Baranov's, and Baranov and his opponents that lasted for several decades. He summarized these objections in his speech at the conference of the Soviet Union fisheries industry in 1951. He said, for 25 years, ichthyologists have been criticizing my old publications, where I analyze the effect of fishing on the structure of fish populations. There are five objections against my theory. Uh, so first, the theory has no grounds because it, it talks about the influence of fishing on fish abundance and population structure, whereas such an influence does not exist. The theory is one-sided because it ignores natural factors. The methodology is incorrect because it was developed based on abstract ideas. The theory is methodologically incorrect because it uses mathematics. And finally, the theory is incorrect because it reaches conclusions that are unacceptable to critics. critics. Well, we are familiar with that one for sure. Um, his first strong critic was uh, Professor Knipovich. Um, Knipovich was the first Russian delegate to ISIS, the, one of the founders. Uh, he was a leading biologist, hydrologist, hydrobiologist, uh, mostly known for his explorations, early explorations of fishery resources in the White and Barents Sea. In 1898, 1902, he led uh, several expeditions uh, to the area. Uh, he was also one of the organizers of the Russian Polar Expedition and the uh, studies of Azov and Black Sea. As a member of the Academy of Science, in his opinion, had a substantial authority. So in 1925, in response to Baranov's paper, he wrote, I find author's ideas totally unfounded and misleading. 
I want to know that the approach to the derivation of principal formula is absolutely unacceptable to me as a biologist. The number of organisms of certain species is defined by extremely complex group of biological, physical, geographical factors and their effects and interactions constantly um, vary. We see only dynamic equilibrium in nature as the summary effect of constantly changing multiple factors. Extracting only one factor, which is not constant and accounting for only its sole effect where even this is not done correctly, we can arrive to various conclusions, but least likely that we will arrive to the right one. He proceeds further. He says, if we cut more forests, take more game, more cattle than the natural growth, this will lead to a decline. Same applies to the rationally organized fishery. Does not matter what formula we invent, it will not change anything. One needs to protect spawning grounds, allow enough spawners to reach them. In other words, provide measures of reasonable self-regulation that Professor Baranov doesn't like, but Baranov doesn't believe even in the importance of providing sufficient recruitment. Baranov responds, what should we do? Lower our head before the creator's wisdom complexity of nature and lack of power in scientific method. Complex problems occur not just in biology and they often are solved with a method that is unacceptable to my opponent. A real event is a combination of so many relations, developments, synthesis of so many factors that we can only approach our understanding of the subject by studying separately its relationship to the extent it is possible by isolating them. We need clarity and methodical analysis of the question. Initial conditions should be clearly stated and they should be logically developed towards the final conclusion. Even an attempt of the use of mathematical method is very useful because it leads the scientists to a clear formulation of the question. Um, the other uh, critic, another professor, uh, ichthyologist, uh, says um, Baranov is contrasting the mechanistic effect of the fissure and the stock to the effect of the environmental factors. To which Baranov replies, my opponent fails to see that a gillnet set in the water is actually an element of the environment and that fishing is one of the factors of the environment. While I'm focused on the effects of fishing and ignore the role of environment, my critics are focused on the role of environment and ignore the effect of fishing. Can one develop a theory exploring the effect of one factor while ignoring the effect of the others? Not only is it possible, it is necessary. It is absolutely reasonable to build a theory that is focused on the effect of one factor, which is the most important to us and the one that we can control. Monastirsky proceeds, when one reviews Barana theory, it can be seen that it is based on the assumption about isolated populations, the homogeneous distribution of fish, an abstract basin, an abstract population structure. Is it possible, or it is impossible to imagine how one can develop an abstract of fish recruitment? Barana responds, Abstraction is underestimated by a large number of scientists. Thought emerging from concrete to abstract is not going away from the truth. It's getting closer to it. Abstracts of matter, laws of nature, abstracts of cost, all scientific series abstracts reflect nature deeper, fuller, more correct. From real life observation to abstract thinking and from it to practice, this is dialectic path of learning the truth, learning objective reality. This is actually a citation from Engels, the um, uh, as a philosopher. Well, there they are. So uh, you probably know the trio: uh, Marx, Engels, Lenin. So they're the sort of the prominent figures of, of course, the, the, the communist uh, Russia or Soviet Union. Uh, they were sort of the, uh, the fixtures everywhere. 
Uh, but uh, besides the political, um, uh, ideological uh, sort of uh, uh, position of this three, uh, all, all of them were uh, philosophers, uh, published uh, substantial uh, um, uh, works uh, in philosophy. Well, of course, Marx was known for you know his economical, the uh, the principal economics work on the, on the capital. Uh, Engels was uh, actually developing philosophy about uh, the natural sciences, and Lenin uh, wrote papers about the uh, generally the um, uh, the abstractions and the and the and uh, uh, um, studying the the world. So uh, in his arguments with the biologist, Baranov quoted uh, this three abundantly. He quoted famous ma mathematicians, philosophers, um, um, Darwin, um, uh, Aristotle, Newton, uh, Guy Gold, the philosopher, and then many, many others. Uh, he frequently quoted uh, Marx, Engels, and Lenin. Um, and he used their work in the context of dialectical materialism, philosophy of science and nature. Um, although his argumentation was appropriate from scientific point of view, some may, may see there an attempt to enforce his position with the authority of these fathers of ideology that dominated the social life in the Soviet Union. Uh, this could be possible a reflection of the state of the society uh, back then, at that time. Um, because as you uh, well know, um, uh, these were different, difficult times. And there were periods of, uh, uh, in the 1930s and 40s and even 50s, uh, uh, there were periods of um, uh, mass repressions, uh, orchestrated search of animus of people, um, covering all levels of the society, including physicians, scientists, engineers, um, which were followed by court trials and prosecutions. So uh, the period there was a period of public condemnation and destruction of the whole branches of science, like uh, genetics, for example, branding them as wrong and uh, bourgeois science. Um, so here, Baranov's quotes uh, of Marxist classics could have served a double function, possibly as a tool for survival. I, I was trying to understand to find uh, um, some information. Uh, you know whether it, it it appears that he sincerely embraced um, sort of the the socialist ideas. So it 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 could be sincere, but it certainly could be that he he clearly understood that by uh, providing quotes from uh, you know the, this three. Uh, he certainly uh, um, will protect himself because nobody will will dare to to, to challenge the uh, uh, <clears throat> the uh, the the trio. Uh, that was quite uh, quite interesting. Um, Baranov's uh, formal theory was clearly a revolutionary step uh, back at the time. Um, with respect to the originality, he was certainly the first to introduce the mathematical model of the fishery dynamics that uh, created foundation for quantitative uh, fisheries. Professor Terence, late Professor Terence Quinn, unfortunately, in his ruminations to the development and future population dynamics, called Baran of the grandfather of fisheries population dynamics. Uh, the path for Recognition for him was, uh, however, very difficult and different in his own country and abroad. Um, his ideas did not take root in his own country for several decades. His work had to be recognized first in the West before it finally got accepted in his own country. His 1918 paper was translated to English several times, um, but only in the form of the technical reports. The first one was uh, uh, done by British Foreign Office in 1938 um, on initiative of uh, Dr. Russell, the then director of the Lowestoft Laboratory. Uh, another translation was made by uh, William Bricker in 1945. Then uh, the, uh, uh, the Israel Program for Scientific uh, Translations published a volume of 
his works in 1977. And finally, the American Fisheries Society published the Baranov's 1918 paper in compilation of classic fisheries science papers. So you can find that volume and order it. Um, so uh, um, early translations of Baranov's paper were made known to uh, and appreciated by uh, Russell and Michael Graham, another director of uh, uh, Lowestoft Laboratory. Uh, apparently, Russell approached uh, uh, Johann Jord, um, who was a prominent figure in ISIS in 1931, in, in the letter, I have a copy of that letter, informing him of Baranov's paper and proposing to publish it together with the other piece of papers of the ISIS scientific meeting. Uh, it's not known what your responses was, uh, response was, but Baranov's paper was not published, obviously. Um, uh, the last section of Baranov's uh, paper, actually, uh, that 1918 paper was devoted devoted to periodic fluctuations in fish stocks, where he talked about conclusions of the uh, York 1914 famous study. Uh, and called them very important, but at the same time expressed the doubts about the validity of some conclusions, whether these critical comments affected your decision, we'll probably never know. But inspired by the work of Baranov and others, Graham, Michael Graham, here he is, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, hired young um, scientist Holm, uh, Beverton and Holt, to work on uh, the development of the, the formal theory, which resulted uh, in, uh, here they are, a famous uh, photograph of uh, Beverton and Holt, um, which resulted in the production of the Bible of uh, fisheries biologists uh, the, uh, on the dynamics of the exploited fish populations. Um, anyone familiar with Baranov's work uh, could see clearly in the heart of the Beverton and Holt dynamic flow model which was of course immensely more extensive and detailed. Uh, Beverton and Hall clearly acknowledged Baranov in their uh, 1957 seminal publication. Um, and uh, um, it's not uh, clear though, uh, whether the work of Beverton Hall was built in Baranov's paper or was completely independent, uh, uh, parallel development, but uh, during his lecture, um, um, while visiting the Beverton, uh, uh, Beverton's visit uh, to the United States in the 1980s, I believe, uh, he said that in the post-World War period, um, the greatest contribution was by Fyodor Baranov, published in 1918. He said that he didn't see it until uh, uh, 1947. And therefore, in the pre-war period, Barana was not known. His paper did not have any effect at all because it disappeared in the limbo with the first World War I and the Russian Revolution. I never heard of seen of him, and I've never heard of anyone else who met him. Um, Neither Beverton nor Holt were aware of the time uh, of the Baranov polemics with ichthyologists in the Soviet Union. Therefore, it's particularly fascinating to read the following statement in their work. We make no apology for the fact that much of what is to follow is mathematical in nature. It is now generally accepted by Fisher naturalists, and in fact, by most workers dealing with the population problems that mathematics is indispensable tool in their studies. So eventually Barana's work was recognized and appreciated by Ricker, Harrison Holt, Thompson, Russell, Graham, Silliman Clark, and many, many others. Uh, Bill Ricker, one of the most influential fisheries scientists in the 20th century, viewed Barana as a mentor, according to Quinn. Uh, and um, even though he never met him, Ricker, um, based on his interest in Barana work, uh, went to visit Soviet Union in 1969, where he learned a lot of uh, Barana other papers and many other Russian ideologists. Unfortunately, that happened after Barana's death in 1965. Um, 
No, no, it's not that big. Oh, there, there he is. So finally, uh, there is some model more than parallels to uh, this uh, debate that occurred between Baranas and other geologists. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> in the, some recent papers, uh, uh, biologists are arguing, and <clears throat> partially uh, reasonably, that uh, too many fisheries scientists are believed to have become keyboard ecologists who often lack wisdom to interpret data. They also complain that the stock assessments have become too complicated, that the use of abstra abstraction is, is, being, is challenged again uh, by, uh, by many. Fishery scientists confuse model outputs with the reality, they say, or the modelers. Reality is believed to be more uncertain than what assessments scientists portray. And the use of simpler and more direct forms of monitoring, assessment, and management is suggested. Um, models have become too complex with the outputs difficult to interpret and often at odds with the reality. To which uh, Baranov, I think, uh, could have said um, that the theory presented in the mathematical forum leads to a certain form of criticism of the theory. The first step is revealing formal errors in theory development. This leads to the theory improvement, not destruction. Because the theory is being developed to study relationship, this cannot be observed directly. The fact of meeting the assumptions can be confirmed only through comparing the theory results with the fact. Even if mathematical theory was applicable to a small number of cases, it would still be extremely useful, um, allowing at least in these cases to move further into in talks uh, and calculations. So, uh, this concludes my presentation. Uh, um, uh, it, it shows that uh, the, uh, um, the history of uh, <clears throat> conflicts of uh, different ideas and, and, and views um, uh, is, is rich, uh, provides a lot of uh, uh, insight, uh, teaches us good lessons, and certainly is still applicable these days. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, um, I'm happy that uh, you know there, there is a chance for for me to sort of bring the memory of brilliant scientists uh, and um, you know have uh, you folks to know about him, and so that that you could spread the word and teach your students or or your colleagues about it, uh, and, and uh, keep on working on the development of uh, uh, the fishery and science further. That's it. Thank you very much for for your uh, for your attention.